program plans follow the guidelines. Actually, that is a good idea because I might have some questions. You know that word guidelines? It means sometimes things are open to interpretation. Exactly. So a key idea is adequate supervision. No surprise there, right? Well, no, but I mean, what does that mean? That we're over 18 or that we've passed the criminal background check? Actually, adequate supervision means at least two adults, with at least one of them over 21, are there for all scouting trips and outings. And at least one of them has to be a registered member of the BSA. And in order to get a tour permit, one of them must be youth protection trained. So that means like my wife and brother couldn't take a troop to a gaming arcade or a Habitat for Humanity build site or whatever. Right. It's called Too Deep Leadership and it helps protect adults as well as kids on trips and outings. Wait, how, how so? Well, on the youth protection side, if one adult tries something inappropriate with a scout, then the other adult can step in, stop it, and be a witness. On the flip side, having two adults means you're better protected against false accusations of abuse, since again, you have an adult witness. But in this case, they would help refute a false charge. And that's why they call it the too deep leadership? Yeah, exactly. But remember, too deep leadership is a minimum standard. You know, depending on the activity and the number of members, you might need more adult leaders. You know, I love that. It is so reassuring. I just feel like in today's world that the BSA has such a strong commitment to our kids' safety. Absolutely. Listen, you're really well protected, and so are the kids, as long as you follow the Too Deep Leadership guidelines. By avoiding any one-on-one -on -one contact between a leader and a scout, you really reduce the opportunities for abuse to occur. And that's another really important guideline. You know, there should be no one-on-one -on -one contact between an adult leader and a scout that's not in full view of other adults or youths. Well, that sounds like a good idea in theory, but I can think of a lot of cases where you might end up alone with a scout. Like what? Well, let's say you finished a troop meeting and you're waiting for the last parent to show up and pick up their son, and your other leader couldn't stand until all the kids were gone. Good question. I'd say it really comes down to planning. If you know your other leader has to leave early, then you know, maybe recruit one of the other parents picking up their son to wait with you until that last boy is gone but do it in advance so it's not an ambush and you don't get caught with no alternative but to be alone with that last boy. Well, yeah, but sometimes that's not always possible. Or even schedule parents to be there just to wait with you. you know, sometimes people are looking for ways to help out without becoming a leader, and this is a great way for them to get involved. Okay, what if one of my den leaders, they're dropping off the boys, but one of the den leaders lives way off, and it really doesn't make a lot of sense for them to be the last person dropped off? Sure, but, you know, we also have to follow the guidelines. You know, as long as there's another member present, you're meeting the no one-on-one -on -one contact guideline. So, for example, you could have your registered Cub Scout son riding along with you, and that would meet the guideline. What about when you have to speak to a scout alone? Like, maybe there's a discipline problem or something. Yeah, it's okay to speak to the scout alone, but you have to remain visible to the other leaders. So, you just move out of earshot and make sure that you can still be seen. What about merit badge counselors? Aren't they alone with scout?